Hey, today we're going to be talking about CAD ECMs, how to troubleshoot them, and how to program them. All right, so this video is going to be talking about how to program and troubleshoot CAD ECMs. So it's going to be broken into two parts. The first part of the video is going to be how to troubleshoot your ECM. Do you have a problem with your ECM? Are they common causes of failure? How to troubleshoot them, basically. The second part is going to be going into how to program them, or more appropriately, how they are programmed, because you will probably not be able to program your ECM unless you have a full version of CAD ET, which is extremely expensive. And since you won't be programming it yourself, you'll probably have to take it to a dealer and have it programmed. But I'm going to show you what the dealer has to do to program it. Um, so just kind of a, you know, for your information. All right, thank you. So here we have a typical CAD ECM. It's always located on the cold side of the engine, below the intake manifold. This is on a C7, but pretty much the same location for any CAT diesel engine. On the rear of it is the P1, which is the OEM connector. That one right there. That's where all your inputs are. And that's your P2 connector. That's what all your sensors and injector wiring go to. And there's only the two connectors, and they are four millimeter hex Allen. So this is the ECM removed. This is the up direction. That's down towards the oil pan. This is your 70 pin OEM side. That's your P1 connector. And these four holes here are for these rubber grommets that isolate the ECM from vibration. You do not want to lose them when you remove it. Now, the 70 pin on the right is the one that supplies the ECM with powers and grounds. And pin 70 is very important. Pin 70 is your switched power. You should have 12 volts there or 24 if it's on a tour bus when your key is in the on position. Now, the the constant powers and grounds you have to look up in a wiring diagram to determine which ones those are because those are different. Now, if you get all these injector codes like this, all the injector codes are current high or current faults, that is almost always the ECM's fault. Now, if you test the wiring and you have powers and grounds where you're supposed to, and your engine isn't starting with no other apparent faults, you're going to have to buy a new ECM, which is typically a reman, which is cheaper than new. All right, we're going to talk a little more about that. All right, so we just looked at the basic parts of an ECM, where it's located, a couple common failures. So do the ECMs fail a lot? Yes, yes they do. Now that doesn't mean you're going to lose an ECM every couple years. It just means they are a common failure point. We we are programming an ECM in our shop a couple a week. So they do fail quite often and they are quite expensive. You're talking probably about depending on which serial number you have around $2000. Now that doesn't mean that your ECM is going to fail anytime soon. Sometimes you'll see them go a million miles without any issues. Sometimes they just seem to fail. It's, it's weird. Some of the common causes of failures for them is heat. Um, computers do not like heat, and this computer is bolted to your engine. Not only that, it has a lot of... it's doing a lot of things. It's firing your injectors, it's sending information to other control modules on the truck or bus. So they do fail. But most engines that have an ECM, you know, a lot of them will fail over time. It's just, you have a computer in a hot, extremely hot, uh, dirty environment with a lot of vibration. It's, it's hard to make them last forever, you know. But like I said, you will see them with over a million miles sometimes. So we already looked at a couple common failures of the ECM. What are a few others? So... We already looked at that if the ECM is getting the injector current faults, it's pretty much done, you need a new ECM. If it has its power and grounds and its switch power and it's not communicating or it's not your engine is not starting, it's done, you need another one. What are some other ones? Well, I've seen a couple that after they heat up, they will cut power but not code or D-rate. 
or they'll run rough with no other no other faults to be found. I've found that. Um, that's fairly rare, though. I've only seen a couple of those over the many years I've been in the truck shop. Um, really, the injector one and the just completely dead ones are the most common failures on these. We had one a couple weeks ago. It would get hot, and then it would lose communication, and the truck would die. The driver poured ice water on the ECM, and it, was, it fired back up. And he was able to drive it to our shop doing that. So if you're in a really hot condition or it's hotter than it's been or you're, you're in a different area of the country and it's hot and you think your ECM just failed, um, try that ice water trick. Um, you know, it may not get you down the road to where you're trying to go, but it might start, it might start it back up and you might be able to get off the road or get to a toast, well, I guess you wouldn't need to get to a tow station, but get to a service station. So what's the cheapest way to change your ECM? You, you've narrowed it down that the ECM is bad or you've plugged in with the scanner and has all the injector current faults. Now you can have a tow to a shop obviously and they can do it or you can do it yourself. It's not incredibly difficult. Usually you only need like a 13 millimeter wrench or a 9 16 wrench and a four millimeter Allen wrench or internal hex style socket to remove the two 70 pins or the 70 pin and the 120 pin. And the cheapest way to do it, if you're going to do it yourself, is remove the ECM, go to your local cat dealer or authorized dealer, get the new ECM, it'll be a reman, typically. Remans are a lot cheaper. They can then program it there for you. And I'm going to be showing you how they're going to program it. Now, sometimes they cannot communicate with your old ECM. If that's the case, the programming is going to take a lot longer. Or sometimes, if your engine has never been downloaded by an authorized dealer, they will only be able to program some of the parameters, and you'll have to bring it, the truck back to have some of the other parameters programmed, such as uh, you know vehicle speed calibration, tachometer calibration, um, perhaps injector trim files, timing. There's a lot of different ones they'll have to program themselves if it's never been downloaded or if they cannot communicate with the ECM. So when the technician first hooks up to your new ECM, it's going to come up with this prompt. It's going to say blank box flash required because this ECM does not know what engine it's going on. Now, this highlighted number here is the flash file. That's going to determine what engine and what horsepower that engine's rated at. So it's then going to go to wind flash, which is this secondary screen here. And if you look at where it says part number none that's what that seven digit number we're gonna have to find is to program the ECM so the technician is going to open his files and then when they open them they're going to find the appropriate one for this engine now the numbers we're looking at here the 430 and 1650 are horsepower ratings so I want to talk a little bit about that now, if you're thinking of doing a re-rate or changing your horsepower, I have a video on that. But this would be a very good time to do it. Because when you get a new ECM, it's blank. There's no file in the ECM. Which means, if you're in a re-rate family, and say you're in the middle of the road, let's say you have a C15, it's an MXS serial number, you have it rated for 475, but you want to take it to 500, now would be the time to do it because they're programming it anyways. They should be able to program it without needing to charge you the $250 re-rate fee. Um, even if they do charge you the re-rate fee of $250, the labor should already be rolled into the price of programming the ECM anyway. So even if they do charge you the re-rate fee, it's going to be significantly less than if you just said take it in to have it re-rated anyways because usually they charge about $500 for that so it's it's basically like getting it for half price or free now this flash file has to be downloaded from Caterpillar so you can't just download it anywhere and after you've selected the appropriate one you're going to begin the flash which takes a while depending on how new or how old the ECM the older the flash file the quicker it is now, after you have flashed it, you're going to go back into ET. And all these parameters we're looking at in your configuration have to be programmed from the old ECM. 
Now, if you have to do them manually, this can take a very long amount of time because you have to do it line by line. So typically what the mechanic will do, if he can communicate with the old ECM, is they will go to copy configuration. They will then go to ECM replacement and they will select the old data from the old ECM and they will program the new ECM to the old parameters, which should carry over serial number, injector trim files, engine timing, pretty much everything. And at that point, the ECM has been programmed and it is ready to be installed. All right, thank you.